Merry Christmas, everyone. Today is our final episode of our series, A Blessing in Bethlehem. Jesus is born. Join us as we read the final installment of our Christmas story, learn about the Magi that visited Jesus, and learn about the connection to the Bethlehem star that we can see greater than ever before tomorrow. Let's take a moment to pause for God. Welcome everyone, and once again, Merry Christmas. Let's grab your Bible and open up to Luke 2. We are going to read the story of the birth of Jesus as it is written down in Luke 2. Hear this good news, friends. The birth of Jesus. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. The Shepherds and Angels That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. So let's imagine for a moment the setting of this magical scene. In a manger, lying in strips of cloth, was the Savior of the world, God's own Son, sent to us to save us all. A quiet, still, and indeed a holy night, where Mary and Joseph welcomed Jesus into the world. And they weren't alone in welcoming Him. They had three visitors that brought baby Jesus gifts, hence the practice that we now have of giving gifts at Christmas time. We read about these visitors, also known as the three wise men, in Matthew 2. The NIV translation titles this section, Visitors from the East. Now let's read from Matthew 2, verse 1 through 11. Here it says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them 
the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So these three brought gifts to Jesus, who was referenced in the selection as the newborn king of the Jews, and they worshipped him. A very unique opportunity that we have this year in 2020 is that we have the opportunity to see this star of Bethlehem that the wise men um, account for in this story more than ever before. So according to an article by senior science contributor Jamie Carter at Forbes, this coming week, we can see a, quote, impossibly rare Christmas star. Carter writes, quote, that this week there will be a great conjunction. That's the term used by astronomers to describe a situation in the solar system when Jupiter and Saturn appear to pass each other very closely. He goes on to say that they will appear to be a more one-tenth degree from each other. So a tenth of a degree from each other. So essentially, this conjunction will result in a very bright star appearance, and it is supposedly the closest great conjunction that we have been able to see since July 16th, 1623. So it's truly a sight to see, and I believe the date that is most visible is tomorrow, December 21st. I will link the article in our description box of wherever you are listening to this podcast if you would like to read about this further. And what a great reminder this story is of the hope that we have in Jesus, not only as our personal Savior, but as Savior of the world. Jesus is the reason for this season, and listeners, I hope that you have an excellent Christmas with friends and family, and that you may feel the peace and love of His presence this season. I pray that you may worship Him with your whole heart and spend time with those you are closest to. As for myself, I am eager to worship with the worship band I serve with, spend time with friends and family, and move into 2021 with hope that I find in Christ alone. Now, before we sign off with the last episode of the Pause for God podcast in 2020, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening and sharing this podcast with others. I hope that through this unique medium, God has spoken to you in some way or another, and that on your own faith journey, you have taken steps forward with Him. I am eager to see how this podcast grows in 2021. And while I'm hesitant to announce an exact return date, I'm going to pray earnestly for the next series and see where God wants this podcast to go. Stay tuned to our website and Twitter page for when we will be back with our next series. Until then, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you so much for taking time to pause for God and listen to our podcast today. The Pause for God podcast is intended to be a supplemental resource to your own faith journey. This podcast is not to be treated as, nor is it claiming to be, a replacement for church. The views and discussion expressed belong solely to the commentators and are not tied to another individual, group, affiliation, or company.